In this video, we're going to continue building upon what we already have from our bridge reconstructed file. So to keep everything to the correct scale, I'm going to go ahead and open up my completed bridge. Again, before we do that, we need to set our project. You only need to do this once for every time that you've logged into your computer. But if you log out or move to another computer, you'll need to set your project again. So let's do it one more time. File, set project, and then there's my bridge folder. I'll hit set. Now to open up my completed bridge scene, I'll go to file, open scene, and you'll see there Greg Marlowe bridge reconstructed. And I'll hit open. This is asking me if I want to save the previous scene. I don't. And so here's my completed bridge file. Now, the reason I brought this in is because I want to create a vehicle to drive across this bridge. I don't want to make the car too big. I don't want to make it too small. So I brought this bridge in more than anything for reference. Also later, I'm going to want them to be in the same scene anyway, so I may as well have them together now. However, I'm going to want to be able to hide my bridge and unhide my bridge quickly. And rather than go through and manually hide each individual piece, I'm just going to put the entire thing in a group. So I will drag and select all of the items. And over in my layers editor, I'm going to click this little button here with the blue dot to create a new layer containing my selected objects. I can double click on layer one and we'll name this bridge model. It's important to recognize that you, you cannot have spaces in this name. And I will hit save. And so now you'll see my entire bridge model is inside of this layer and I can turn it on and off. So before we start modeling the car, we have to ask ourselves a couple of questions. First, do we really know what a car looks like? Although you think you do, chances are you really don't. There are so many details that we just ignore or take for granted when looking at th objects in the world around us. So it's really encouraged to refer to image reference whenever you're creating a new model. So let's go look at our handy dandy Google. I'm just going to type in the word car and hit search. Now, obviously, our options are going to come up to try to sell us a car, but we're just wanting to look at some images of cars. And you'll see that we're going to get a lot of diversity in this. We're going to see everything from these cube-shaped cars to the animated film cars um, to sports cars to sensible sedans. Right. So I'm just going to try to find something to use as a rough guide for me to base my car on. I also kind of want it from a perspective that I am able to get the most amount of information from it. So for example, let's use this car. This is a Suzuki um, car. And I'm just using this as a reference image, so I'm, I'm just going to kind of keep it over to the side. Later I'll show you some ways that you can use your reference a little more precisely. Um, so I'll just move this back and forth between my two screens. I'm going to move it off to this side. So where do we start? If we go up to our poly modeling menu, we see we have the ability to create all sorts of starting models, but none of these are create car. We have sphere, you know, cube, cylinder, very simple primitive shapes. Um, none of those are a car. So we have to figure out what is going to get us the closest to the shape that we eventually want. Although there are a lot of rounded edges on this car, for the most part, it's still pretty boxy. And so I'm going to start with a cube. I will click the Create Cube button, and you'll see that I get a cube buried inside of my bridge. So I'm going to have to sort of raise that up and, and get it into a location that makes sense. I also don't necessarily want my car in the middle of the road, so maybe I'll scoot that to one side. Using my car as reference, I'm going to start to scale this object to where the basic shape is relatively close to what I want my car to be. So I can 
hit R for scale. And I'm gonna want it to be a little wider just so it feels like it takes up half of the road. And I'm gonna want it to be a little longer, maybe something like this. And I'm gonna kinda of look and see where we are in relation to the ground. Maybe raise it up just a little bit higher. And, and that's probably pretty much where I'm going to stop. What I have created here, maybe make it just a touch less tall. And what I've created here is basically going to be the body of the car, excluding the roof and the top here. We're gonna create that separately. Now, the bridge is kind of getting in my way. So now that I have this to the correct scale, I'm just going to go ahead and hide my bridge layer so I can work on my car by itself. Again, if we feel like we're kind of orbiting the wrong area, I can just hit the F key and focus back in on my car. I can still edit some of the attributes that were used in the creation of this object. In my channel box, if I go down to my inputs node, you'll see this polycube three node. Yours may say polycube one or something else. Um, but we're looking for the input that created this box when I click the button on the shelf. And that's what polycube three is. If I expand that, you'll see some of the items that I can change about this object. So what we're gonna look at is the subdivisions and the width, height, and depth. This is how many edges create this object. And currently it's one by one by one. And you'll see that this object is made up of a single face, right, long. So if I go back to object mode and click polycube three, I can add some height, width, and depth subdivisions. So if I add some width subdivisions, maybe one, or I'm sorry, height subdivisions to make it a little taller, some, uh, this is width to give it some, some length on the car, and then maybe one depth subdivision to give me some faces to edit, All right? Now, one of the things you're gonna notice is that we still need to get the roof of our car um, sort of up out of this. What some people may think would be the right way of doing this is just to create another box and, and sort of attach that onto it. But our car is actually made up of one continuous piece of metal, right? And so if I did that, I would be able to see the seam where those two boxes meet. Instead, I want to be able to get more mesh to sort of grow up out of this top part of our object. So I'm going to hold down right click and go to face and I'm gonna choose these top faces while holding shift so I can select all four of them. Make sure you don't accidentally drag select because then it looks like nothing is selected here, but you'll see I accidentally selected here. So if I hold down shift, I just wanna make sure I just have these top four boxes selected. Now, if I were to try to raise these by moving them, you'll see that it's messing up the hood and the trunk area. Right, this doesn't look like a car. What I need is these faces to sort of grow up. So if I hit Control E, that will allow me to extrude these objects. You'll see that my locator has changed into a different shape, and now if I pull up, I get more mesh out of this. So now I have more faces that I can use to get the shape of my final car. If I hit W, I just go back to the regular move tool and you'll see that I can move those around. 